Hey guys, even here, so Texas Pro 2023 open class pre-judging, as you can see right in the center we had a two-man show, basically Hunter Labrada versus Andrew Jacked, and I would even go as far as to say we had a one-man show, because I don't think it's really that close, I think Andrew won this Texas for the second time very easily. But we're gonna look at the other poses, we're gonna compare these two guys and see what exactly happened here, who was better, in which poses, in which body parts, in, in which aspect. And here on the right also you see uh, Carlos Thomas Jr. with a very very disappointing showing. I wasn't sure if this guy was gonna actually battle against Hunter and Andrew, and I really thought that he was gonna give them a run for their money, but apparently it really wasn't the case, uh, because yeah, as you can see he's much much smaller than them in stature, like he's a very very short guy, there are amazing bodybuilders in 212 who did great when they switched to the open, so it's not really that much about the height and about the frame, it's more so about the conditioning that Carlos Thomas Jr. did not bring. And it kind of seemed like that, we all saw that the physique update from one week out, so yeah, he definitely wasn't in shape back then, and he wasn't in shape uh, at this show, as you can see he was definitely way off, he was watery, he was, he was fat in certain areas, so yeah, he was still big, he was still enormous, but it didn't really show on stage because of his conditioning, of the fact that he wasn't prepared for this show. In some poses, he looked impressive, like this one for example, most muscular, I mean his legs did look enormous, his arms as well, his chest too, it wasn't really as impressive as it looked on Instagram, but yeah, it was pretty good. However, some of the other poses really showed the lack of conditioning and just the lack of development as well, that back was a weak point last year when he won the nationals, and it, maybe it's a little bit improved, but it's still not up to par to his other body parts, to his front and side poses, his back poses need a lot more work, that back needs to get thicker, it, it can't be this shallow if he wants to compete against the best in the world, like Andrew Jack and Hunter Labrada. Now Hunter and Andrew, they both brought it, like uh, Hunter was probably similar to Tampa, uh, maybe a little bit worse, I think I liked uh, the Tampa package better, I think he was a little bit flat here, and it showed in certain body parts, like the chest, like the lats, like the legs as well, so I think he was a little bit flatter, it kind of didn't really go with, the, with his look, I prefer to see him fuller, but Andrew, he, he, was, he was really conditioned, he was just as conditioned, if not more, probably more conditioned than he was in the Arnold Classic, but he was fuller, a little bit fuller, he wasn't as full as he was at the last year's Texas Pro. Uh, now, here is the biggest difference that I was curious to see on Andrew Jack, whether his back poses are improved, and they definitely are. Now, the back poses were the two poses in which I thought Hunter may beat Andrew because of his thickness, but as you can see, Hunter... Like, he doesn't have the thickest lats, right? I mean, his lower lats aren't exactly super developed. Now that he got super lean, his back looked very good in the back double, but, like, he is very thick bodybuilder. Like, he has a lot of muscle on that frame, a lot of density, and Andrew, he has a lot of detail. He has very good structure, very nice insertions, very good symmetry and proportions, like upper body to lower body, I mean, the way his lats are inserting, uh, the way his back is just shaped, I mean, the, everything is just perfect, like, this is like a perfect anatomy chart, even his lower body from behind, but, like, he was known for not really bringing uh, those crazy details in the glutes and the hamstrings, and also his back was kind of behind in terms of development, but at this show, I think he really showed that he can improve that back, I think his back is looking much, much better, much improved, much thicker, but, you know, Hunter, he's probably wider to the shoulders, like, structurally, and he probably is a little bit thicker overall, and maybe he has more separation in the glutes and the hamstrings, but then you look at Andrew's small waist and the way his back is shaped, and I don't know, man, this one is very, very close, but one thing is for sure, Andrew did improve that back, and he did improve... I think he improved his uh, lower lower body conditioning from behind, I think his glutes showed a lot of separation for this fullness overall, however hamstrings didn't really show crazy definition once again, maybe he just doesn't have that genetically for some reason, 
maybe it's not the conditioning uh, problem, maybe it's just development or whatever. Like Samson doesn't have the best glute separation and Andrew apparently doesn't have the best hamstring separation. But overall, this pose looked good for Andrew. And yeah, I'm saying good, I'm not saying great. There are great poses of Andrew, don't worry about that. Like this one, for example, I mean, look at this side tricep. How crazy is this looking? Look at that chest, I mean, it's all in freaking fiber, so wrinkly. I mean, look at, look, look, look at the arms and the delts and like the, the legs as well, uh, and this conditioning and his fullness. Like that pose looked really good, and this is probably his best pose, absent eyes. Uh, the way he, I mean, he probably has the best midsection in open bodybuilding today, I'm pretty sure about that. And that's now probably Hunter's weakest uh, point, and Andrew is really exposing him in that department. I'm gonna show you in the rest of the video. But overall, as far as Andrew Jack, I think it's pretty safe to say that he brought it. Uh, could have he been fuller? Yeah, yeah, I think he could have been fuller. I think he was fuller at Texas, and I think that was still his most impressive addition so far. I think George Ferrer did a phenomenal job in Andrew Jack. Uh, here, I think he was fuller than Eddie Arnold, and his conditioning was probably as good as it was at Arnold, better than Texas last year, but I still prefer to see Andrew full, like blasting full, because of his big, big frame, because of his long limbs, especially those arms and like forearms. I know it sounds silly, but I think it adds uh, to the overall illusion if you, if you are just full, filled out everywhere, and in order for, for Andrew to be filled out everywhere, he needs to be super full, blasting full. He should probably have the same approach as uh, Samson Dauda. Like, he was, he's never gonna have the most shredded, the most separated glutes on the stage. So he doesn't play that game. He plays the game of fullness and size. And, like, big frame. He wants to fill out that frame and he does that. And that's why Samson is doing that well. I think Andrew should be doing the same. Should be playing his own game. And yeah, I think if, if Milo Sarcho was coaching him, that would be happening, but Chris Asito is like the conditioning guy. He wants to see everybody super, super peeled, and if you have a problem with conditioning, you go to Chris Asito, right? He can get you dry, he can get you peeled, and uh, yeah, maybe Andrew had that issue only with his glutes and hamstrings, but overall, like, he was always in decent shape. I think what he lacks more now is fullness, not conditioning. So when we see him on Mr. Olympia stage, I would love to see him fuller, much, much fuller than this. I want to see more fullness in the arms, especially in the quads, too. I think his quads are a bit flat at this show, probably flatter than I ever saw them before. So yeah, I think he should work on that, like not, not downsize the legs, bring them in fuller. And just overall, I want to see him fuller, as conditioned as possible, but fullness should be a priority. Now, back to the show, back to the video, if you look at these two guys in the back poses, and the side poses as well, you won't be too sure who is really winning this, I think they are very, very close. Uh, back lat spread, uh, Hunter is having trouble holding this pose, he's probably too dehydrated or something like that, who knows. Uh, now, now, from the back, it's kind of close, none of these two guys are like really phenomenal from the back, but they are okay. Uh, in the side poses, I mean... Andrew, uh, the way he's hitting this uh, this side tricep is looking awesome, but from the sides, you would see that Hunter is thicker, right? And Hunter does his pose from the side because he's showing how big he actually is, and he is really big for his frame. Uh, but from the front, in the front poses, I think Andrew is just dominating everybody here because of his super small waist, super developed and just neat looking abs. And just a really good V taper. Uh, for some reason, in this pose, both of these guys weren't really able to open up properly. But I think Andrew beat uh, Hunter in pretty much every front pose. But it wasn't that 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 dominant. It was kind of a close battle here. Um, in the side chest, as you can see, Hunter is once again showing that thickness. Andrew definitely needs more size if he wants to be like really competitive at the Mr. Olympia stage. I spoke about this before. I don't see a reason for him uh, competing this year again and doing this show and doing the Mr. Olympia because, yeah, he needs more size. He needs an off season. He needs a year off when he's going to put on the muscle and then, you know, he can battle against the top guys, but not yet. Hunter beat him last year at the Mr. Olympia and, yeah, Andrew was off, but so was Hunter. Now here it's a bit of a different story, but I don't think Andrew made that much progress. I mean, I think he peaked a little bit better here because this is his second show with Chris Asito. 
But, you know, we all want to see Andrew fulfill his maximum potential. And we all know what I mean when I say that. I mean, this guy was talking uh, how he was going to win the Mr. Olympia. Flex, uh, Flex Wheeler was saying that very often, every chance he got. A lot of people have high expectations from Andrew Jack. And I can see the potential. I can definitely see it. But there is one thing he lacks. And that's size. He still needs more size. He has a super big 6 foot 2, I believe, frame, and he needs still more muscle to fill it out. Now, this pose, one of the front poses in which Andrew is destroying Hunter because of the midsection, simple as that. That's basically the reason why Phil Heath lost the Mr. Olympia to Sean Roden, and that's probably the reason why Hunter is losing against Andrew. Look at Andrew's midsection. How beautiful, how perfect. <laughs> Look at the symmetry. It's absolutely perfect. <laughs> like, I mean, this is crazy. And uh, just very, very neat midsection, very small waist, very developed and symmetrical and good looking abs. And then Hunter, a complete mess. Uh, and I think it, it was this bad last year, so he messed it up, he did something to it, I don't know what, is it like a hernia, is it like the, he didn't train it, maybe he ate more meat this year instead of protein shakes and that's why he messed up his gut, I have no idea, but it definitely didn't look very good this year, uh, and uh, yeah, again, he, I think he's losing this show because of that mainly. Uh, now as far as legs, like, could you, can, can you notice Andrew's legs is looking like flat? I think they had more of a sweep before. But then look at Hunter's legs and they are also looking much smaller and flatter. So maybe it's the lighting, the video footage, something like that. Maybe just the background that it's making this illusion. Maybe their legs are just fine. But in these, in these photos, in these videos, their legs are definitely looking uh, flat. Hunter should only do this side variation of abs and ties. It looks much better than the one from the front. The one from the front just looks horrible. And this variation of, uh, of Andrew's most muscular, <laughs> horrible. Horrible. This, this is the way. This is definitely much, much better. Um, who is winning this shot? I think Andrew. I think because of polish and details and just the overall freak factor. But the number one reason why I think Andrew Jack is winning this is aesthetics. Hunter had really decent shape, decent aesthetics like a year ago. But he messed it up for some reason, somewhere along the way. I mean, look at his, look at his front double. Look at this, look at his, compare this. Huge difference, huge difference. You can't give this victory to Hunter. Uh, no, no, you just can't do it. Like, there is no way. Because of, of, of the stomach, mainly. And that creates an illusion of, of bad aesthetics, for sure. Like, that's definitely the biggest issue here. And take a look at this once again in a slow motion. So, they're hitting the front double. And Andrew is just standing there like a freaking statue, looking like a, like a Greek god, super aesthetic. He's standing still, he's not moving an inch. And Hunter, he's shaking his arms, he's breathing really deep, like his abs are not in control. And it just, you know, ruins the V-taper. Not very good look for Hunter. Transitions were also a big problem for Hunter, look at this. You should never see this on a freaking stage. Yeah, sure, he has some distension, probably for the first time in his life, it's this bad. So yeah, hopefully before the Mr. Olympia, he's gonna learn to control his midsection now. Uh, it's definitely much, much bigger. It wasn't this big before. He probably never had this kind of issues in his career. This is the first time, for whatever reason. So he needs to deal with it. He needs to handle it, learn how to control it, and showcase something better, something uh, more professional on the stage next time. And he won't be losing points to smaller, but more aesthetically pleasing guys. Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more bodybuilding content like this. And if you guys enjoy my content and you wanna show me some love, there is a link down below in the description of this video. Just click on it, it will lead you to the Old School Labs website, and you can buy your favorite supplements, but make sure to use the code EVAN, which will give you a 15% discount, and it will help me out as well. So thank you guys so much, all the best, and bye-bye.